Okay, so um, uh, welcome to this workshop from Design Lab. It's called um, Using Generative Fill to Alter Images in Adobe Photoshop. Um, my name is Carolina DeBartolo, and uh, if you're outside of this workshop, you can find me on social media at Caro DeBartolo, pretty much everywhere there is social media, just so you know, in case you have any further questions afterwards. Um, and I'm a mentor at Design Lab, so um, uh, I may run across you in my uh, future uh, as a future mentee, I suppose, as well. Um, uh, a few notes before we start uh, from Design Lab. Please stay on mute unless um, I ask you not to. Um, questions are welcome. Uh, you can put them in the chat um, instead of the Q&A. So Q&A we'll do at the end if we have time. I, I think we should today. And uh, lastly, uh, this is a safe space, so please be mindful and respectful of others' opinions. Um, and as I mentioned, this uh, workshop is, or this session, it's not exactly a workshop, um, is sponsored by Design Lab as a host. And uh, if you're not familiar, um, Design Lab is an online educational organization focused exclusively on helping new and established designers build their careers in digital design. And if you're interested, please contact uh, the admissions team at Design Lab. I believe it's hello at Design Lab for almost any inquiries. Um, as I mentioned today, I'm going to be showing you how to use uh, Photoshop, um, but um, Photoshop, uh, the typical version of Photoshop, if you have a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud or if you just want to subscribe to uh, Photoshop alone, of course, it is a paid product, an Adobe product, um, you do need to get the beta version of Photoshop. So if, if you're in your Adobe Creative Cloud app, uh, look under beta apps. So here's where your normal apps are up here at the top, but under beta apps with this little uh, icon beside with a little um, chemistry <laughs> beaker, um, you have to download and install something called Photoshop parentheses beta. Okay, so that's where the AI functions of Photoshop are located. So I'm going to change the sharing my screen to sharing my Photoshop um, app. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions as I go along. Um, I picked a couple of images to give a shot um, with this AI. It's always a little bit of a crapshoot because you know you are using an AI, so you may or may not get good results. It's it's <laughs> you're not guaranteed, right? So it is uh, an iterative process, just like all of design using an AI. Um, so sometimes you have to try and try again before you uh, actually hit on what you what you were intending to get. So I picked a couple of images. I just picked a few images up from um, Unsplash. And what I'm uh, gonna show you is sometimes we find like a perfect image, but we wanna use it as a hero image, for example, at the top of a website uh, page or something like that. So you have this great image. It has all the qualities that you want, except it's tall and skinny. And if you crop it to be very wide and narrow, um, it's just not gonna have those same qualities. So you actually just need more of the image to fill a wide and narrow space. Now there's lots of things you could do, but today with generative AI, you could take any image and you could potentially um, make it into a, a wide skinny image rather than um, a tall thin image. So I'm gonna um, imagine that I have this image and I'd like to make it into a hero image. And I have found just from experience that a lot of times if I have approximately a 16 by nine proportion, um, that's a good proportion for um, uh, creating a, um, a hero image, right? That's the, that's a good proportion for that. So the first thing I will do, I'm in Photoshop beta, remember that, um, and I will go to my size of my canvas, so canvas size under here. It's under the image menu, canvas size. And now I have this um, menu and it tells me that this image right now is 4,000 pixels by 5,000 pixels. So I need to do a little bit of math. I can get rid of my handles here from Zoom so I can get to my calculator. Um, so I'm gonna use my little calculator in my, in my desktop here. And so the height of this image, I'm gonna make it wider. So the height's gonna stay the same. So I just need to figure out what, is a nine a 16 by nine proportion if my height is 5,000. So I'll say 5,000 divided by nine gives me 555. So that's my single unit is 555 pixels. And then I'll multiply that by 16 equals 8,888. So now I want my width of this image to be 8,000. It's 8,888 and eight repeating. So I'll do 8,800. 
and 89 pixels. And you also have this control down here. This would allow me to keep my image in the middle and it would add extra space on either side. Or I could keep my image to the uh, left and it would add more image to the right. Or I could keep my image to the right and it will add more uh, blank space to the left. So I'll keep it to the right right now. So I have this kind of operative area on the right hand side. And I'm going to add all the extra space on the left hand side. It also will ask me what, and you can decide what you would like, what color you want to um, appear in the background when you extend the canvas. So I'll click OK to that. And now I have my larger 16 by 9 spacing. I'm going to use um, this tool, which is called Magic Wand, and I'm going to just select that area. And you see right away I get a little generative fill option here. But before I do that, I want to make sure that when I generatively fill this area that I don't see sort of this, this seam between the new generative image and this older part of the image. So I'm going to alter this um, uh, selection that I have here by making it a little bit bigger. So I'll say expand selection. By the way, I should move this up a little bit so you guys can see what the whole menu is. So I'll use expand selection. This is a pretty big image, so I'll use you know, 50 pixels sounds about right. And then um, the other thing I'd like to do is now that's still a hard line. You know, it's a very crisp line between the uh, white part and the older, the original image. So what I will want to do also is put something on there called a feather, which kind of fuzzes the edge a little bit. So it gives you a nicer um, a transition between the new and the old parts of the image. So try feathering the selection. And yes, I had tried this earlier, so all my settings are on there. So I used 50 pixels, and then I'm going to use 40 pixels of feathering. Um, by the way, this one right here, I don't want to have that on for something like this because I want it to go all the way to the edge. I don't want a fuzzy edge. I want the edge to remain crisp, but the transition between. So at the middle of the um, image here, I'd like it to be uh, fuzzy. So I'll say OK to that. And now I will say generative fill. That thing popped down. I'll pull it up. So I'm kind of a big fan of giving things a try. When I've used AI quite a lot for the last year and a half or so. Um, I'm kind of a big fan of just giving it, if, when I have the option of not giving a prompt, <laughs> just letting the AI see, see what the AI will do for me without me um, telling it anything. So I'm just going to click generate, and then this AI should look at this image and try to fill in something else. So I'll say generate, and you can see I get a little um, timestamp, a little uh, progress bar there. And then also on this side, you can see I'm in my layers of the document and my original image in the background, and then I'm going to get a fill layer on top. Hey, pretty nice, right? So um, actually, Adobe um, AI is built from their existing um, stock imagery. So you can see that you know it's pretty good with photography and nature because there's tons of that, of course, in within their library of images. So there's one, and then you can see now I get three options. Here's the second option, and here's the third option. So if any of those are working for me, and they all look pretty good, but depending on my situation, I may or may not like that. And if I wanted to, I could generate some more. So I'll get three more. And this is still coming onto the same uh, generative fill layer because I still have the same selection that I had originally had. And there's some more. Uh, by the way, they come out in the front. So the numbering changes. So if you liked image number one, it's going to be image number through number four now. Um, so you can just click through and see which ones you like. Some of these I like the mountain, and I don't like the sky. And some of these I like the sky, and I don't like the mountains. So, but I think that one might be my favorite one. And if I do pick one that I like. Um, if I do pick one that I like, uh, you can see that I have two layers here. So I have a couple of options. I can save this as a PSD file. It's a Photoshop file so that I can go back to it and see my other layers or play with it or uh, whatever. But if I like it well enough and I know that that's all I need, I got I got the perfect image now, um, I can use this menu over here. And oops, looks like that's out of your, your view. Let's see if I can use some of these other menus and you can see. It doesn't allow you to see my menus very well when I share this part of my screen. Um, but let's see, I can use a thing called merge down. 
So I would just, or I can flatten the image either way. I only have two layers, so they're going to do essentially the same thing. But merge down merges one layer down to the following, the layer below. And the flattened image just turns it into a flat image. So I could just flatten the image. And then it turns back into just a flattened image. Um, there's a question from Olivia. Hi, Carolina. So feathering to make sure the AI generated image blends well with the initial. Yes. It, and you can kind of see here that there is a little bit of a, you can see a little bit of a line. It's not too noticeable. I mean, we noticed it because we know that this was, um, pieced together, but if you did have a problem with that, you could feather it a little bit more. Um, you could also try using this tool, the healing brush tool. It's our spot healing brush tool is called. Um, and if you make it large enough for something like this, like I'll make it even larger and you could try going over that line if there's any part of the line that you know looks pretty bad you could kind of try to fix it up a little bit looks like it's using a layer mask to feather the edge uh i don't know if you call that using the mask to feather the edge but i did um when i did my selection i added a feathering to the edge and then it when you generate the um, new part of the image, then the, it comes out on a layer. But so far, I have um, also just flattened my image. So right now, it's all one image. And you can't use the healing brush until you flatten it out. So um, that's another possibility. So that one came out pretty well. Let's try a different kind of an image. Because this one, you know, to be honest, this, this kind of image the AI does pretty well with. So let's try this one. Uh, this one is kind of unusual because it has a painting behind this image of a person and her dog. And so let's do the same thing. If you recall, I will go to my image size. And in this case, it's 2000 by 3000. So let's see, the height is going to stay the same. So it's 3000 divided by nine. So I'm going to make it a nine by 16 uh, proportion again. And that gives me 333, three, three. multiply 333 three, three by 16. And then I get 5333. Three, three. So the width is going to be 533. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, repeating again. So I'll just add a 4. Oops. Oh, sorry about that. I used the wrong tool. I should have used canvas size, not image size. So they're, they're similar, but they're different. So canvas size, I just want the canvas to get bigger. I don't want the whole image to get bigger. So canvas size. Okay, what was my number again? 5333. Three, three. So the width is 5334. Three, three, and in this case, I'm going to keep the person on the left and I will expand to the right and see if it'll give me something that looks believable. That's a lot of space too. So this one, you know, you can see the proportions are a little di different. Um, I'll use my magic wand. I will select the white. I will add a little expansion to it 50 pixels that's okay and then i will also feather that edge a little bit feather by 40. since it's a painting i'm actually going to feather it a little i'm going to feather it the whole 50 and see what happens okay and now i'll do the same thing i'm not going to tell it again i'm just going to see if it will generate something that's decent without me having to instruct it There you go. Now, I may or may not like, you know, what kind of a, a mural that it put behind her. Um, but I, then I could be more specific about what kind of mural I wanted in there. For example, that one looks pretty believable, I think. Maybe not. Not sure how you feel. But once again, I could generate three more options, or I could choose one option and merge it down and have a new image. Um, I could also choose a section of this image, of course. I could um, go from here if I, and I'll just merge it down for the moment. And then I could choose, you know, say, I kind of just want to see what you can do with this part because, you know, that concrete platform that they're sitting on is not too bad. But let's see if I, let's feather this guy feather selection so it blends in 50. Yep, I think I'll keep it at 50 and see how it goes. You can see how it rounded the edges here. Um, and then I'm going to say 
a beach themed painted mural on let's see if that's see if see what happens see what that see if it gives me anything that's decent <laughs> So maybe I'll get a little bit more imagery or something rather than just uh, abstract uh, paintings. And maybe that's more interesting. Yeah, a little bit. There you go. But you can see how it's pretty good at keeping the style uh, of what the, the partial mural that was from the original image in there. So there you go. Oh, this one has like a painted chair. <laughs> it's a little funky, but it's getting closer. So depending on how you feel, you know, again, you can keep generating or not. Um, so that's that image. And then another one that I thought we'd take a look at. This one has, a, the photography is very crisp. Maybe in this case, what we'll try is um, changing the proportions and leaving both sides of the image. I'll keep the image in the middle. So let's go again to my canvas size. I'll keep the image in the middle here. My height on this one is 37.54. Let's do my math. 37.54 divided by 9 gives me 417.1 and then I'll multiply that by 16 and then 66.73 so the width is going to be 66.73 and here again I'll keep it in the middle and then I'm going to get white on either side of this image. So this situation is a little different because we can actually generatively fill either both sides at the same time or one side at a time. So for example, if I select this one and I go to the trouble of expanding it by 50 and feathering it, let's go back to 40, for example, and then I generatively fill this side, generate, See what it gives me. And then um, if I like any of those, I could keep that. And then I could do separately, I can do this side. And oops, I gotta make sure I go back to the background. So you can see that it, it selected the negative space of my generative fill layer. So make sure you're back on your background. Deselect, select this guy, and then expand by 50 and feather by 40, for example, and let's see what it gives me when I generatively fill this side. Okay. Um, so not too bad, but you can make a decision about whether you like both sides. I like to do them if I do have something that I want to stay in the center and I'm adding to either side. A lot of times I like to do them separately so that if one side comes out well and the other side is not so good, then I have them as separate layers. So it's kind of easy to choose one or the other, choose you know option two out of one and option three out of the other one. The other thing that we could try is to do them together. So here's my background again. I'll just select this one and this one together and then do the same things. I'm gonna expand it a little bit, and then I'm gonna feather it a little bit, same way, each selection. And now I'll generatively fill both sides and we'll see what it gives me. Of course, if you, if you do them both at the same time and you need them to be separated, just make a copy and delete one side and use the other side or whatever. So you can easily do it, it's just, Sometimes it can be nice. The other thing that you'll see with this one that generated both sides at the same time is that it might look a little harmonious across the entire image um, because it's it's looking at the um, the center of the image and kind of responding to both sides at the same time. So that one has a lot of palm trees. It's kind of cool. That one too. So yeah, it's giving me plenty of options there. So pretty simple. 
but um, pretty powerful as well for you know quickly and easily changing the aspect ratio of an image. Of course, you can do it in any proportion that you like. So if you had a wide image, you could make it into a tall image, although a lot of times a wide image tends to be easier to crop. It's those tall skinny images that it's, you know, you just need that width. Otherwise, your the operative part of the image gets cropped off, like if it's when your website's on a mobile device or something like that. So this has been uh, one of the uh, things I thought generative fill was pretty useful for. Um, and I use it in my artwork as well. Sometimes if I want uh, an image to be expanded a little bit, um, so you, that we've used it for photography here, but you can certainly use it, like I say, for more painterly looking things or drawings or anything else. So. Any questions? We definitely have time left today for questions. Could be any Photoshop question if you wanted me to see if, see if you can test me and see if I know any, <laughs> any Photoshop techniques that um, you were hoping to, to learn about in this session. I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Bernardo. I'm um, really interested in how Photoshop uh, generative AI can play with other generative AIs. So for example, if I were to come up with an image that came out of mid journey, um, that is not part of the Adobe stock plan, like, do you have an example of something like that? Well, funny, you should ask. So here's, um, let me open this one. I use Midjourney a lot, and yes, I do use it to adjust my images in not a lot of times with AI, but sometimes. Um, so let's say, so here's an image I just happened to be looking at on my desktop that I have made in Midjourney. And um, let's do the same thing. I will do canvas size, and this one I'll just, well, I can do the math again, I guess, be consistent. Um, let's see here, so I have 24. Time, oops, divided by nine, and then I get 113 times 16, 18, 20. Doesn't seem big enough, but maybe, oops. Let's see, this one, I think I'll keep this one over on this side and see what happens. Okay, now, um, feather, Expand by this one's a smaller image, so I'm just going to expand it less. Don't have as many pixels. Feather by 15. Say OK. And then let's see what happens. I'm just going to, once again, I'm not going to put a prompt in there and see what happens. But yeah, this image did not come out of um, Adobe, or it's not a typical Adobe stock kind of an image. It's kind of a Gauguin inspired, as you can see. This one, you can see how I, I didn't feather it enough, so you can really see the seam between the two. So see if it, but yeah, not too bad. It's not as, you know, it's not as stylistically similar um, as you can see, but this is even without prompting. So it just depends right. on the image, you know, different images will work better than others, but you can see how it's, it's, it's getting there. You know, if I put a prompt in there and I was specific about it, I mean, I might get better results. And of course, also, if I didn't have that seam, <laughs> maybe that would be better. So, yeah. yeah. Any, any, uh, any experience with just general upscaling? using upscaling. photoshop uh yeah. upscaling uh there's a couple of different things you can use for upscaling one is called uh topaz gigapixel i think that's a really good upscaler if you do not want to make changes to an image but you want to upscale it using ai um and then the other one is um uh visual electric which is next week's workshop visual electric is an app that you can use to upscale images they just added that i think last week and there's another one that's a paid uh, app, uh, uh, web app called Magnifique.ai. Um, but Visual Electric seems to have the same functionality as Magnifique built into it. So Visual Electric is, uh, I, I think that's kind of the way to go for upscaling. Or if you have Topaz Gigapixel, that's just like a regular desktop app, old school. You down, you pay for it and download it and have it on your, on your computer. Let me see if I can see if there's any other questions here that I can answer. I feel like the generative AI in the main Photoshop is this different. I have been using it in beta. I do not know for sure uh, if it's in the regular one or not, but it might be. Do you know the legality around using the newly generated image for personal use or commercial use? Um, copyrights with regards to anything that's AI right now is pretty unclear. <laughs> um, I think you're safe 
until somebody makes new laws about this stuff. Um, but yeah, I think if you generate it, if you prompted the AI, then the AI is essentially just a tool. So you own it as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. Uh, let's see, from Austin, is there any way to refine a generated result once you've got something close to what you like? Yeah, sure. Um, as I showed you on this one, for example, I think it was this one, where, yeah, I just took a section. So I, you know, that was my original that I had merged down into the uh, background image. So you can see here, this is all one image now. And then I chose just a section of that and I generated um, some different, hmm, I don't know why it's not giving me the little generator thing. Oh, here, because I'm not selected on it. Oh, that's funny. I could have sworn out. Maybe I maybe I did something to this already. I can't remember what I did. But um, yeah, I got three different versions of what could go into this uh, section. So yeah, once you have it, you can select a section of it, and then you can generate some more. Like if you like part of it, but not all of it, you can definitely do that. Um, and then the refinement also of, let's see, for example, this one that I have this, let's merge this one down, for example, I could flatten this image and I could try, I think I would, what I'd rather do um, is just fix my, fix my selection, but I could try this healing brush tool on it and just see if it, yeah, it fixes up a little bit, but you can still see there's kind of a seam there. So healing brush tool also has like AI, um, capacities in it. So you can use healing brush tool. Healing brush tool is really nice also for things like this, where like, if, for example, say you had a few pixels of white at the edge, you can just go along the edge and it'll kind of clean it up for you real quick. So on a healing brush. Let's see. Hi, Carolina. How do you know how much to expand the image by? Oh, so um, I'm doing, I'm using my little calculator. Uh, I'm looking up when I, when I go here and I look up the canvas size, it tells me what my height is, I'm looking, this is the original height, 1024. So I'm taking 1024, I'm dividing it by nine, and then that's giving me one ninth. And so I, I need 16 times that to make that width. So I'm just multiplying. So divide by nine, then multiply that result by 16, and then you'll find out what a nine by 16 proportion is. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, the other way to do it, of course, if you don't wanna do any math, <laughs> even with a calculator is just make it hella wide <laughs> and then and fill it up and then try to, but the wider it is, the less it, likely it will fill it well, you know? So it's good to be right on proportion that you need. Let's see. Can you please type those in the chat? That sounds great. I mean, upscaling apps. Okay, type message. So it's uh, Visual Electric. Putting this in the chat. Or, that's one way to upscale. Visual Electric does a lot more than upscaling. The Magnifique. AI and then Topaz Gigapixel. If you just want to upscale without too much uh, changes to your image, then Topaz Gigapixel is probably the best way to go. Um, the other ones will upscale and they can do, they can use AI to creatively change the image. Is it any good at generating people or animals? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you could do that. You can do that. You could, that would be with a prompt because otherwise it'll probably do the laziest thing it can. <laughs> so um, give you more background kind of thing, especially in these cases. But yeah, if you had a picture with a lot of um, the animals and people may or may not go with the original, but you know, you can keep prompting it um, and see if that will help. Okay. All right. Well, we are officially at time and um, Thank you, all. Thank you all for coming, and uh, have a good rest of your day. Hope to uh, see you at the next workshop, which will be next Monday, same time, same place, or not the same place, different link, but <laughs> uh, almost the same place. So you're very welcome. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>